guys, it's Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a series review for the Iron Fae series by Julie Kagawa. For some reason, book reviews are actually my highest viewed videos on my channel, which is weird because I always think that they're my worst videos, but apparently you guys like watching them, so we're going to do another one today. So the Iron Fae series is made up of four main books in total. So book one is the Iron King, book two is the Iron Daughter, book three Three is the Iron Queen and then book four is the Iron Knight. Now there is also a compilation of novellas that you can buy and that is the Iron Legends as well. So that has, I think it's 1.5, 2.5 and 4.5. Overall as a series, I did enjoy it. I actually enjoyed it a bit more than I thought I would. I did read a lot of mixed reviews on Goodreads, especially for the first book. One of the questions asked under this book was, is this book worth reading? And someone was like, honestly, no. And I was like, ooh, okay. Book one, The Iron King. So this follows Megan Chase, who just thinks she is living a normal, standard high school existence until she realizes her brother has been swapped with a changeling. She finds out her best friend is actually like Robin Goodfellow or Puck from A Midsummer Night's Dream, if any of you have read that one. And also turns out that she is the daughter of an Iron King, like a fairy king. So this first book follows her and Puck as they venture into the Never Never, which is the fairy realm, to get her brother back, but of course they can't do it smoothly, they do have to encounter some snags along the way. So now is when I will be delving into some spoilers. I'm not going to go through everything that happens in the books because we would be here a while. If you haven't read this series yet and you don't want to be spoiled, click off because I have been roasted for not doing spoilers like warnings before. Okay, so with this first book, I'm not going to lie, it took me like five months to read and that's because I started reading it when we first went into isolation this year. It didn't grab me and I really just wasn't interested. I finally decided to pick it back up maybe two weeks ago. If you're not patient, I wouldn't exactly recommend getting into this book because for me personally, it didn't actually pick up until almost 200 pages in. So if you are a very dedicated reader, you really want to read this, then by all means go ahead and read it. As soon as it hit that like, I think it was like 170 pages, as soon as we got there, oh, we hit the ground running. I could not put this series down after we finished that mark. Following book one, there is a 1.25 called The First Kiss, and that details Ash and Megan's first kiss, but from Ash's point of view. Now, you can just read this. I think it's on Scribd. Um, you can read it for free, and it's on a couple of other online websites as well. It's only a couple of pages, but it's really cute, and it's such an insight into Ash's mind, because I feel like in the first book, even in the second, he's such a closed off character and then to get like that little view into his mind to actually know what he's feeling in the moment you just kind of like thank you <laughs> next is 1.5 which can be found in the iron legends and that is winter's passage so this one details megan and ash's journey from the mortal world into the unseely realm because megan has to hold up her end of the deal that she made with him but they do detour to see Puck along the way and then also run into some other trouble. I feel like I would have been really lost in book two for a while if I hadn't read this. I mean, it is referenced a little bit and some of it is verbatim, but it's only like two sentences out of maybe 50 pages. And it just gives you that much more detail into their relationship and their characters as well. Book two, The Iron Daughter. So this one follows Megan while she's in the Unseely Court and just kind of follows what happens to to our main characters, especially once they realize that the Iron Kingdom is still alive and well, but with a new ruler on the throne. I found Ash and Megan's relationship in this infuriating and adorable at the same time. Just because after reading the first kiss, we knew that Ash was already in love with Megan. So reading from Megan's point of view, when Ash was just being a right pain, was really hard to sink into because we already knew how he felt so we knew that he was lying when he said that he didn't care about her and it was so frustrating not being able to reach into this book and just like slap some sense into the main character and be like hello like he made it very very clear that emotions are preyed upon in the unseely court he made it very clear 
that they would not be able to have the same kind of relationship once they reached it. And yet she's still all, oh my god, was all of this fake? Like, how could he do this to me? And I'm just like, oh. get a grip. I need to get a grip. Alrighty, moving on to book three, The Iron Queen. So this one follows Ash and Megan as they begin their lives as exiles in the mortal world. But... It seems Fairy just can't quite let them go yet, so the false Iron King has started a war with Summer and Winter, and Megan, being the half-human, half-fairy that she is, is the only one who is actually capable of stopping him. I actually loved this book. It was my favourite out of the series. I rated it a 4.5, which is rather high for me, if I do say so myself. I loved the romance, I loved the drama, I loved the fighting. Megan was such just a badass character in this book, and I absolutely loved her for it. And then we got to see Ash's more vulnerable side as well, which was something completely different than what we normally get. It was just so nice. <laughs> to be able to read that. But let me just say, I finally got the heroine almost dying scene that I wanted this whole series. I was in the mood for it and I was waiting for it and it finally happened. Like the whole time I was reading it, I was like, can she just hurry up and almost die already? So that like, we have drama. Puck has almost died that many times. Ash has almost died that many times. She didn't know how to fight in the first two books. So she was just kind of hiding behind them while they did their thing and now, She's come into herself, she is a queen, and I was living for it. Alrighty, 3.5 is called Summer's Crossing. So this one follows Ash and Puck, and it's actually from Puck's point of view. It starts with Ash wanting to find a way to be with Megan in the Iron Kingdom, but then, and I'm so going to butcher her name, Leannon Seed or something, she just comes up and she's like, hey, someone stole something from me, and we struck a deal, so I want you to go get it back. And that's kind of all it is. Like, I think I gave this three stars just because it, <laughs> it seemed kind of pointless to me. Like, it was just a little bit, oh, here you go, have some more, like, Ash and Puck time. And I'm just kind of like, nah, do I really need it, though? With the other point fives in the novellas, I felt that they were really key to the transition of the stories. And this one was just kind of useless. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> Moving on, the final book of the series, book four, The Iron Knight. Let me just say, what a surprise it was to find out this whole book was from Ash's point of view. You wanted a novella? Uh-uh. You got a book. 361 pages of Ash. It doesn't get much better than that. But pretty much it follows Ash, Puck, Grimalkin, and some other characters as Ash is just going on an adventure to try and find a soul so that he can be with Megan in the Iron Realm and not, you know, like, die. First things first, why couldn't Ariella have stayed dead? Like, seriously, I did not expect her to come back in this book. I thought we had left her behind. And then she's just like, poof, hey, I've been alive this whole time. I want, like this whole time I wanted to hate her, but she kept being nice. And then the jealous side of it came out and I was like, oh, I can hate you now and I don't have to feel bad about it. I was honestly just pissed that she was a character for the whole book. You could see that she was still in love with Ash and while I felt bad for her, it was like, honey, you had your time, you died, you were supposed to stay dead, let him move on. Like it's been decades. And now she just comes back in and she's like, hey. Wanna go for round two? I did love though in the end of the book because when Ash was going through his trials and he was realizing how weak it was to be immortal, in his vision he grew old and he was weak while Megan and their son were fairies so they weren't aging. I was really hoping that he was going to be able to maintain at least some of his fae powers so that he can grow old with her and that they can like raise their son together and it will be really cute and it happened and I was really happy about it. Like I absolutely I loved it. One of my favorite quotes from this series was in the very end of the book when Ash comes to Megan, she was like, you came back. And he's all, I came home. And literally, like, cue waterworks. I was a sobbing mess. I did skim a fair bit of this book, though, just because it didn't grab me the whole way through. Like, there were times that it was really interesting, and then there were times that everything kind of dropped and it was a bit of a lull. And during those times, I was just kind of flicking through the next few pages until something interesting happened again. And that is also just me. I'm a very impatient reader. So most likely that was just me trying to get to the good bits. But at the same time, 
yeah, it is what it is. But anyway, that is my series review for The Iron Fae. If you have read this book and if you loved it or hated it, let me know down below because I am really interested in what you guys thought of it as well. If any of you struggled in book one like I did. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you liked it. And if you want me to keep doing book reviews, let me know. Because personally, I don't know if anyone actually likes them, but analytics are proving differently. So anyway, I will see you guys next week. I need to get better at like saying goodbye on these things.